So let's look at section 2.2, symmetry and transformations. So I'm going to start with um, a power function. We've probably seen them, but maybe not known them by name. But a power function is any function in the form of x to the n. Um, and n can be any real number. So it could be x squared, um, but it could also be fractions or negative numbers. So like a square root would be a power function, because it's x to the 1 half. Um, rational 1 over x is also a power function because it's a negative 1 power. Um, so these are some good graphs to be familiar with because what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to do other graphs starting with these graphs. So we probably all remember that lines look like this. Um, x squared makes a parabola. Um, x cubed makes this shape. Uh, x to the fourth is kind of a parabola, it just gets a little flatter at the bottom. Um, 1 over x makes this shape, right, because we had those asymptotes. Um, so we want to just be familiar with these. Um, 1 over x squared kind of looks like 1 over x, but they're both positive um, y values. So the left and right um, are both positive. Um, a square root function, I hope we've all seen that, but if not, right, kind of looks like a sideways parabola with the only part of it. x to the one-third is just a reflection, which we will see this chapter, of x cubed. So there are some similarities between those, and we'll see that by the end of this chapter. Um, two-thirds is probably not one we've seen, but now we have. It kind of makes like a V-shape almost, like, a, like those little birds you draw or something. So this one we've probably never seen, but now we have. <laughs> and we'll learn some graphing techniques in this chapter. So let's um, start with symmetry. Um, the reason we care about symmetry is if I can graph this side, then I don't have to graph this side. I can just use symmetry to figure out the other side. So um, in chapter one, we talked about the three types of symmetry, about the y-axis, x-axis, and the origin. And now we're going to relate those to functions. So functions can be um, symmetric about the y-axis and the origin, um, but it turns out they cannot be symmetric about the x-axis. So let's figure out why. Um, so maybe like a sideways parabola would be symmetric about the x-axis, um, or a circle would be symmetric about the x-axis, right? The top and the bottom are the same. Um, but the reason... Um, they're not functions, right, is they both would fail the vertical line test. So basically, being symmetric about the x-axis immediately makes it fail. So we could have this graph, but as soon as we draw it down here also, it fails. So um, we, with functions, we won't look at symmetry about the x-axis. Um, only the y-axis and the origin. And this is going to lead us to this thing called even and odd functions. So an even function is when we plug in negative x and we get the exact same function. Um, that's what makes it even, by getting the same value. And an even function will be symmetric about the y-axis. So here's an even function on the left side, and you'll notice the right side, sorry, the left and the right side are the same thing. Right, so this is even. If I plug in x or I plug in negative x, right, you'll notice the y value is the same. So x, y, and negative x, y are both points. Um, for an odd function, it's basically the opposite. When we plug in negative x, we get the negative function, and it, we might remember that's symmetric about the origin. So in this graph, Symmetric about the origin means we take that and then we can kind of flip it. It has that like 180 relationship. But if I plug in x and I get y, if I plug in negative x, I get negative y. So there's like that reflection right there. So let's check if a couple functions are even or odd without a graph. So if we want to check for even and odd, um, I plug in negative x. Um, one thing I like to do before I plug in negative x is just find out what the negative function would be. I think it helps with the simplifying. 
So if I make the function negative, what happens? And then I'll compare that. So I get negative 5x plus 1 over x. And then let's see what happens when I plug in negative x instead. So we're basically comparing like what happens to the negative on the inside versus the outside. So we'll plug in negative x minus 1 over negative x. So we get negative 5x and then we get plus 1x, 1 over x. Um, so that doesn't match the original function, but yeah, it looks like it matches negative f of x. So f of negative x equals negative f of x. So this would be considered an odd function. Cool. Let's try another one. So let's check out what happens to the negative function and then we'll plug in negative x. So negative just means distribute a negative to everything. So we would end up with negative x squared minus 2x. And then we'll plug in negative x. And essentially we're wondering, does it match this one or this one or neither? So we'll plug in negative x. So we get negative x squared in parentheses plus 2 times negative x. So negative x squared becomes x squared. Uh, minus 2x, and that looks like it matches neither of these, right? So it doesn't match the original, but it also doesn't match the negative. So this would be neither even or odd. We'll try one more, and then we can actually look at the graph as well. Um, so negative h of x. On this one, it's just a negative x to the 4 thirds. Um, so let's see what happens when we plug in negative x. So make sure you use parentheses when you plug in, and we're going to have to review some power rules. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is, since it's a trickier power, I'm going to take out the negative one. Um, so we don't have to deal with the crazy powers. Um, we can split it up. So negative 1 to the 4 thirds times x to the 4 thirds would be the same statement. So let's see. Um, so negative 1 to the 4th to the 1 third times x to the 4 thirds. Um, what happens to negative 1 to an even power? I think that becomes positive 1, right? Just like negative 1 squared is positive 1. Same with the 1 fourth. We bring that to a 1 third power, and that's just 1. So we get the original function. So in this case, this one would be even because h of negative x equals h of x. And let's check graphing. So I like to use Desmos, but um, this is a little bit easier to display um, while using the notepad. I'll show you how to use Desmos in later examples. So I'm just graphing to kind of see the symmetry. You do not need a graphing calculator for this class. Um, any graph will do. You can use Desmos. Um, so let's change the window. Oops. Actually, yeah, we can just do this. So this was our odd function, and so you can kind of see that symmetry about um, the origin, right? It's kind of like a 180 reflection. That's what the origin will do for odd functions. So that was the first one. Um, let's check g of x. So I just, I think it's nice to see visually what this means. Oops, I forgot the plus sign. Uh, I like Desmos better than this, so if you don't have a graphing calculator, just go to Desmos. It's much better. Yeah, and I don't see any symmetry. So I see symmetry, but not about the y-axis, and that has to do with where the vertex is. Um, so there is some symmetry with this graph, right, but not about the axis. So that's why that was neither. And then let's look at h. So this is just for those of you who are visual. Sometimes it's nice to see visually what even and odd means. And then here's h. So it kind of looks like that x to the 2 thirds that I showed you. But yeah, we see that symmetry about the y-axis, right? These, the left and the right side are the same. So that's what an even function looks like. 
So um, graphing's not required, but it is nice to visually um, just see what these even and odds are doing. So I'll see you in the next video.